Hey, and welcome back to Brass with Ben. Today we're going to be talking about how to clean the trumpet, which is, I think, one of the more important things that we can possibly learn to do with the trumpet, um, because it gives us a bit of a deeper appreciation for the trumpet, and we're going to learn sort of exactly how it works, where the air goes, what all this tubing's for. Super important exercise, and it's going to save us a bunch of money because we won't have to send it into a um, music shop to get it cleaned professionally every single time it needs to be cleaned. Let's dive in. First off, we're going to collect everything we need to clean the trumpet. Of course, we'll need a trumpet, we'll need a regular bath towel, a microfiber towel or something similar so that we don't get lint and fabric particles inside the horn and on the slides, a trumpet cleaning snake, which you can get from any music shop that sells trumpets, from the same shop, a valve casing brush, again from the same shop, a mouthpiece cleaning brush, some trumpet slide grease, and the trumpet valve oil of your preference, again from a music store that sells trumpets. Now, on to disassembling the trumpet. We'll start by taking out the mouthpiece if it's still in there. It is super important that we make sure to memorize where each part of the horn comes from so that we can put it back together at the end. Take special note of the order of the valves because the trumpet won't make a sound if they're mixed up. I like to lay them out in order next to my case so that I can visualize where they fit on the horn. To take the valves out, just unscrew the top part that connects to the valve casing and gently twist and pull until the valve comes out. Don't force it, the metal of the valves is very soft and once dented you'll need to get it repaired or replaced. If the valve is stuck, you can slide some valve oil down the side of the casing and try slowly twisting the valve to set it free. Follow the exact same process for all three valves, remembering to lay them out in order so that they can be replaced in order. Take that third and final valve out and then we can move on to the next part of the disassembly process, which is the valve caps. The valve cups are these little circular manhole covers that cover the bottom of your valves and they just two straight off the same as the valves. The only difference is that you don't have to worry about what order they go in because they're completely interchangeable and completely identical. Next is the pin that holds your third valve slide in place. And if you have one, the pin that holds the ring on your third valve slide in place and the ring itself if it's removable. Take these off and set them aside. Then we take out the third valve slide by just gently pulling, again, never forcing anything. The trumpet is surprisingly delicate. Set that aside and very gently pull out the tuning slide gently so that we don't accidentally knock and dent the bell or the slide. Set that slide aside and move on to the first valve slide, gently pulling to release it. And then set that slide aside and we'll pop off that second valve slide again by gently pulling. Those pins we set aside earlier we're going to put them somewhere safe for safekeeping. They don't get a wash today and they don't need it. These are all the parts of the trumpet that we're going to put in the bath today. The body of the trumpet, the first, second and third valve slides, the tuning slides, the valve caps and the mouthpiece or mouthpieces if you use more than one like me. We're going to start by rinsing the bath out of any foreign objects like sand or hair or soap suds before running a lukewarm bath. A little warmer is okay if you have a silver plated trumpet hot water will strip that beautiful shiny lacquer off of our brass lacquered trumpets. Lay a bath towel in the bottom of the tub while ignoring how much mine needs to be repainted. Then, using a mild hand washing dish soap, pour a small amount into the bath. Maybe the same amount that you would use in a regular sized sink, if not slightly less. We're using a small amount of mild dish soap so that we don't risk damaging the lacquer and we reduce the risk of soapy buildup once the trumpet is dry. Let that bath fill up a little and if the towel billows a bit, don't worry too much. We're going to rinse off the main body of the trumpet. First, making sure to rinse the tap water through all of the pipes, the valve casings and the bell so that we get rid of any larger buildups to make our job a little bit easier later on. We're then going to lay the body of the torn gently down onto the towel, which is there to help avoiding denting or scratching the trumpet on the hard porcelain of the bath. From here, we'll rinse out the other parts of the trumpet Making sure that on the slides, like the tuning slide and the third valve slide, we rinse some water through the water key or spit valve if you like, by opening it up while we're rinsing the tubing. That's one of the problem areas for buildup and tarnish. 
Rinse out the other slides of the tube. I like to work from biggest to smallest, just so that I know I'm being methodical and so that I can ensure that I'm being thorough every time I wash my horns. You can pull the side of the towel up to get some of the air out from underneath and give your trumpet a nice flat towel to lay on if you like. We're also going to rinse and replace in and place into the tub our three valve caps. Again, the order there doesn't really matter. Last but not least, we'll rinse and soak our mouthpieces. Turn off the tap once the water level gets above the bell of the trumpet so that you know everything is covered and soaking. Then we can get our brushes, mouthpiece brush, and our valve casing brush, and our cleaning snake, and throw them in the tub to help that get that soapy water in and around the bristles before we start scrubbing. Leave the trumpet soaking for 10 minutes to give that build up a chance to soften and lift. Now that the horn's soaked for 10 minutes, grab out that trumpet cleaning snake, and we're going to go. Uh, we're going to thread it through all of the tubing of the horn. I like to start with the lead pipe going both ways through so that I can redo it at the end because I find that it has the largest amount of gunk. Here's my underwater action shot of that gunk coming out of the horn. It's kind of gross, but in the immortal words of Shrek, better out than in I always say. Removing that gunk will make the horn easier to play and hopefully will help creating a more clear tone. We'll thread that snake through the bell as well, making sure we've got enough spare to get it out though. And if you ever find that you can't push the snake any further, don't force it. It's probably just hit a part of the tubing that it can't get around and forcing it might internally dent the horn, which is definitely something we don't want to do. Moving on now to the other areas of tubing, give them a good scrubbing, but especially with the second and first valve slides, be careful not to push so hard that you hit the inside of the valve casing. That's very easy to do and small scratches and dents can build up to make the action on those valves a lot worse than it should be. Moving on, we're gonna make use of the snake to scrub the inside of that third valve slide, still being careful and making sure we aren't forcing the snake where it doesn't want to go. Finally, with the snake, I like to push it all the way through the lead pipe and pull it out the end just in case I loosened some gunk earlier that had now got a chance to soak and lift. Now we're going to pick up our valve casing brush, that's that big bushy one, and use it to scrub the inside of our valve casings, being very thorough because these, the easy movement of the valves can make or break our performances. I like to go from the top down and then from the bottom up just to be sure. Then we can use our dual purpose valve casing brush to clean around the external areas of the trumpet. Uh, this is going to be scrubbing off buildup in areas where our fingers touch a lot or our polishing cloth doesn't. Like the fingerings and in between the bracing around the outside of the valve casings as well as any screw threading just to make those screws go on a little bit easier. We want to be thorough but not aggressive, making sure to clean while avoiding chipping the lacquer or scratching that silver plating. From here, we're going to turn that tap on again to a nice lukewarm flow and rinse the trumpet, making sure to get that fresh water in and around every part of the trumpet, from the valve casings to the inside of the tubing, the bell as well as the external aspects of the trumpet, getting rid of all the bath work so we don't end up with any soapy buildup later, either internal or external. Now we're going to grab that slide grease and our microfiber towel and place the main body of the trumpet down on the towel. using that towel to dry all around the outside of the trumpet before we get a small amount of side grease on our fingertip and spread it liberally all over the exposed internal sections of our slides. For the tuning slide, third, second and first valve slides. I like to do these all at the same time to save time later on in the cleaning process. We want to make sure that we spread this slide grease as evenly as possible over all of the slides. Some slide greases can stain lighter coloured clothing so try to avoid wiping your hands on yourself. Maybe use the towel. Next up is the tuning slide. Exactly the same as the body of the trumpet, we use the snake on the inside of the slide and then the valve casing brush externally, making sure to brush around the spit valve because it's an area prone to build up and tarnishing. When we use the snake on this particular slide, it'll be able to go all the way through in one direction. I like to pull it all the way just to make sure I'm not leaving anything behind in the middle. Once we've done with cleaning that one internally and externally, 
We're going to rinse that tuning slide under fresh water again, opening up that water key or spit valve just to make sure that we're getting any soapy buildup out from everywhere we possibly can. Onto the microfiber towel it goes. Dry that slide off, including the spit valve, and we'll use the same process as with the main body of the trumpet to apply slide grease to the exposed section of tubing. Now make sure that that grease is spread evenly all over. I like to put the slide in one side at a time, twisting while slowly moving that slide into its tube, always gently. Do this with both sides of the tuning slide before pushing it back together. The correct way around will see that spit valve facing away from the lead pipe. Finally, clean off any excess grease that might have gotten pushed out by the slide. As with the initial rinsing, I like to be methodical and clean biggest to smallest. So next up is the third valve slide. Exactly the same as with the tuning slide, clean internally with the snake and externally including the spit valve and bracing with that valve casing brush. Making sure again to be thorough, but not aggressive. We're gonna rinse that one off with some fresh lukewarm water. Again, making, uh, remembering to run some water over the spit valve if it has one. We'll repeat the exact same process we used for the tuning slide on that third valve slide, drying externally, especially that water key before evenly greasing and spreading that grease with a twisting motion while pushing it into the main body of the trumpet. Clean off any grease that gets forced out by the slide with your finger or with that towel. The next smallest is the first valve slide. So we clean internally with the snake and externally with the valve casing brush before we rinse that one under some fresh lukewarm water. Dry that bad boy off with a towel and use some slide grease to grease both areas of tubing on the slide and on the connecting main body of the trumpet, cleaning up any excess grease that gets pushed out. Now onto the smallest side, the second valve slide, scrubbing internally with the snake and externally with the valve casing brush. Then we're going to rinse it under that fresh lukewarm water before we get onto drying and greasing that mini slide. Again as always we're going to make sure to try to spread that grease as evenly as we can and then clean up the excess grease from off of the plating or lacquer with the towel or with our finger. Second last in the tub are the valve caps. Scrub those internally with the valve casing brush. You don't have to be overly gentle here. These are pretty tough nuggets. Rinse them under fresh water and then head over to the trumpet. You wanna dry these ones off with a microfiber towel, trying to get as much moisture from inside the threading as possible before you go ahead and screw them onto the bottom of the valve cap, uh, valve casing, sorry. These are very small threading, so it helps to have the trumpet upside down if it feels like it's getting stuck, don't force it, just unscrew it and try again. It could take a few attempts to get them right. Finally, we have our mouthpiece or mouthpieces. I like to scrub initially with the valve casing brush before diving in and scrubbing vigorously with the mouthpiece brush from behind and then a little from the cup of the mouthpiece just to make sure you've got it all out. Again, you can be a little bit more vigorous with these ones. They're pretty tough as well. After we scrub, we're going to rinse them off under fresh water. Then we're going to dry them with our microfiber towel.
you can finish off the process with those mouthpieces by tucking them in just to make sure. Lastly in the bath, rinse off the valves casing brush, the mouthpiece brush and the cleaning snake under fresh water and set them aside somewhere to dry uh, nice and clean, just so that we don't have any soapy buildup on those ones. To clean the valves themselves, we're going to need our valve casing brush and some valve oil. I like to use a sink because I don't like having to bend all the way down into the bath when I don't need all of that water. Turn the tap on to a small stream of lukewarm water and grab out that first valve. It'll be labelled with a number 1 somewhere on the upper portion, the other valves should be labelled 2 and 3 respectively. The process is the same for all three valves. We start by rinsing them under the water, making sure only to wet the lower, fatter portion of the valve, making sure never to get the felts of the valve wet. That'll compress them and the valve won't work so well. Scrub inside the holes of the valves with the valve casing brush. You can use a tiny amount of dish soap on the brush before brushing if you want. Be careful not to bump the side of the sink with the valve, because the valve metal is quite soft and easily dentable. Then, we're going to go ahead and rinse that valve off. Liberally apply valve oil to that lower fatter area of the valve without getting any inside the valve, mostly because that's a waste of valve oil and won't do anything aside from getting shot out of spit valve later. I like to use synthetic light piston valve oil. To me it feels faster even though it doesn't last quite as long. But whatever type of valve oil works for you is perfect. To reinstall that valve, we want to make sure that it's facing the right way. In most cases, that means that the number printed on the valve is facing forward. If you put the valve in and you can't blow through the horn, it means that the valve is facing the wrong way. Give it a spin until you hear and feel it click into place and this will work for 9 trumpets out of 10. For that 10th trumpet, spin it another 180 degrees from where it clicked and it should click into place again and be facing the right way. Give it a couple of test presses, then repeat with the other valves making sure to put them in the correct place facing the correct way. Now that the trumpet is assembled and dry, grab those pins from the third valve slide and replace them. Now you want to blow through the horn one final time and empty those spit valves from any excess water and oil. This will also tell you for sure if the valves are in the right way. Then go out and play something.